as many of you might know, Access Agriculture is a nonprofit organization that promotes agroecology through capacity development and south to south exchange of quality farmer to farmer training videos in local languages. I am pleased to introduce our first speaker, Dr. Paul Van Meli, who is the Access Agriculture Director of International Development. Paul has been spearheading the model of south to south learning through farmer to farmer training videos in local languages over the past 20 years. Paul, we look forward to your explaining to us how Access Agriculture is helping share farmers' best kept secrets on soil health with other farmers. Over to you. Thank you very much, Blessings. And thank you, Samuel and the 4 per 1000 initiative for having enabled this, this exchange of, of experiences. So let me go to my presentation, which is called Helping share farmers' best kept secrets on soil health with other farmers. Now, we all know that within a village, farmers often talk to each other. But when it comes to exchanging information across wider geographical regions, it becomes a bit more challenging to enable the exchange of, of knowledge of farmers. And when we look at, I mean, looking at this quote to start with is to turn the negative impact of agriculture on our climate and environment and human health into a positive one, we need to urgently invest in an agriculture that works with nature, not against it. And we need transformative action at a scale never seen before. And I just want to emphasize the word scale because that is exactly what access agriculture is all about. It's trying to work to promote an agriculture that works with nature, but that goes beyond the local scale. Now the challenges in promoting good soil health practices is that ecological knowledge is complex and it is hard to share. Also farmer to farmer, it is important that the farmers who share the information that it is also um, useful and scientifically, scientifically rigorous. Farmers also have limited opportunities to share their knowledge, as I just explained, especially moving across borders. And also um, women and young people in particular, they often have less access. Uh, women in general also have lower literacy rates. So it is important for rural people that they have access to audiovisual training materials in their own language. So how does access agriculture approach these challenges? Well, in terms of content creation, um, as Blessings explained, we very much focus on South-South learning through farmer-to-farmer -farmer video. Now, when people hear farmer-to-farmer -farmer video, they often think farmers are producing videos. It is possible, but in our model, we only work with trained local partners, local organizations who have a mandate of training farmers. So rather than training farmers to produce videos, we actually train local organizations and we have trained about 20 organizations across Africa and South Asia to produce quality videos according to a format that we have developed over the past decades. Important to mention, Farmer knowledge is absolutely crucial. It is one of the pillars also of agroecology, but with it also the co-construction of knowledge. Farmer's knowledge and scientific knowledge are merged into our training videos. And what we do after content has been created is we also train local media professionals and extension people to translate the video scripts and to then record the, the audio in their local language. So instead of producing 
the same video over and over again, because farmers often face very similar challenges. Um, I mean, there's many different technologies to, to boost uh, or, or to increase carbon sequestration in soils. Um, but principles, for instance, around agroforestry or improving soil life, they apply across the globe. And so instead of producing the same videos over and over again in every single country, we invest in quality production, well-researched videos, and then translate them into many local languages upon demand. The translation is a, um, it's a paid for service. So we don't decide which video goes into which language. Now, content creation is one thing, translating them into local languages so they become more accessible to people is a, is a second step. Now, thirdly, the presentation is all about sharing and access agriculture is also all about enabling the access. So the sharing of information through videos is absolutely crucial. And so for this, we have created this specialized video platform and on this screen i have just opened the sustainable land management category so you can see you can click on any of these pluses and then you will see the subcategories in each of those categories you can navigate you can search which videos are of interest to you and if you find the video the interesting feature of the platform is that it allows people to download the video, the audio, if you work for a community radio station. There's a one-page fact sheet with some technical um, information contained in the video, as well as contact details of a local subject matter specialist. There's also a compressed file for mobile phones. And as I mentioned, the translation of videos is a service that we provide so we don't uh, decide which video goes into which language but the moment a project or an organization invests in a translation we add that local language versions again on the public platform so anybody um, for instance anybody speaking chichewa whether in malawi or, or zimbabwe they can download that, that content in that language. For the moment, our interface is in six world languages, and we host over 230 training videos on agroecology and organic farming. Now, of those, roughly 25%, so 65 videos are available that re relate directly to soil health. And the videos are available in 95 mainly local languages. Looking at soil health in particular, um, I put a few slides together. Recycling, for instance, organic matter and nutrients. We have a number of videos that you can see at the bottom. Um, in each of those videos, farmers uh, present their practices and there's also various interviews included with with farmers where often they they share their intricate knowledge for instance Jaya Lalita from India she says well if I want to make um, a fertilizer organic fertilizer I'm going to have to use plastic containers because metal containers interfere with the good microbes and may spoil the fermentation. So these are all like very practical insights on the use of legumes and trees in agroforestry. You can see a number of, of videos that are on our platform here again. Sonko Vincent from Uganda, he's intercropping his pineapple with soya bean and banana plants. And one of the things that he observed over the years, that is that the benefit of this mixed cropping system is actually creating a cooler soil and is actually 
is beneficial to the earthworms. Not only to the earthworms, as the last sentence says, me too, I like shade when I'm working. On soil conservation, at the bottom here, again, you see different examples from different countries, from Northern Vietnam, from the Sahel region in West Africa, to the Altiplano in Bolivia, to uh, semi-arid zones in India. Again, stressing this importance of creating content in different places and then enabling the sharing of experiences across, across the South. So Modesta Vilka from Bolivia, she says, okay, if we want to have a good future for our children, we should always conserve the soil. So these are actually quotes that you will find in some of those videos. In Amul Hok from Bangladesh, on boosting soil life, um, again, the insights that, that farmers share, and often, I must say, when it comes to the use of microorganisms, farmers in South Asia and in India and Bangladesh, they have an incredible amount of expertise that are now also being used um, in, in different projects that share information, for instance, the collaboration between the Andhra Pradesh Natural Farming Program and the Alliance for Food Sovereignty in Africa. It's all about sharing experiences between Africa and Asia and vice versa. Now, since 2018, farmers have become the largest professional group registering to our platform through mobile. So this for us was a very clear sign that farmers want to have videos in their own hands. As a result, we said, okay, we need not just an um, internet-based platform, but we should also work on a mobile application that makes it on one hand easier for farmers to access the video library, but also cheaper. Now, why is it cheaper? Because the videos on the mobile app, which you can find in the Google Play Store, they are highly compressed files. And once one person has downloaded the video on her or his device, she or he can share it with other mobile devices that have installed the app very fast without any data consumption. So we believe that this mobile app will really revolutionize agricultural extension and be, I think, a very important tool in the hands of the four per thousand members who are all interested in promoting organic ecological farming and good soil health practices. With this tool, we actually allow farms to learn at their own pace, to watch creative, creatively developed videos in different parts of the world at their own pace whenever they have time and with whoever they want to watch it. Another device, as I mentioned, Access Agriculture is all about distribution and enabling access to quality audiovisuals. So we also have a smart projector, which has our entire video library available offline. So you don't need internet connection. It also, the kit that you see here also comes with solar powered panels. So you can basically um, screen videos to rural communities without internet, without electricity. The projector is very powerful, comes with a sound system and you can screen videos to groups of 150 people. There's no end to distribution, so we keep on looking for local initiatives that are interesting and that also, um, let's say, enable us to reach out to a wider audience. So we are also establishing pilots with different digital service providers. And the example that I give here is from Senegal, 
where we collaborate with a French social enterprise that is called Cajou, um, which is a spin-off of uh, Libraries Without Borders. They have actually compiled educational content on many different topics, and they have included also access agriculture videos on the SD card, which are being sold through a network of mobile vendors in Senegal. So this is again another way of reaching out to rural communities through as many different ways as possible. Now, many people, we have, we regularly receive feedback from people across the globe, um, how interesting and how easy to, um, easy to follow they find our videos and how also they appreciate that our videos are really rich uh, with indigenous farmer knowledge. When we did a survey last year, we do uh, organize global surveys every three years. Um, or nearly 3000 people took part in the survey. And on this graph, you can see a little bit also the diversity of ways by which people share the videos right? using ideas or sharing it with other organizations through social media phone cards the projector dvds but also radio and tv from those surveys we also know that over the past decade by the way access agriculture is now celebrating its 10th anniversary and it's, it's really encouraging to see that over the past decade, more than 5,000 organizations have actually made use of our video platform and our video resources. Through our network, because we are a small organization, we're only 25 staff, but we work very much through partnerships. And again, this is the importance of being a member of the 4 per 1,000 initiative and to be able to reach out to all the people who are here, but also hopefully afterwards other, other people who haven't been able to join um, this presentation. But so we try to reach out to as many organizations to collaborate and to provide our content, which is all freely available. In terms of impact, you can see a better soil was was on the third position so more than 40 percent of the people mentioned that okay farmers who watch the access agriculture videos and of course there's many different topics uh, they actually improve their soil this is one of the last slides i just want to share also with you all so apart from the videos that are farmer to farmer and that are available on the access agriculture video platform we have also established a second video platform which we call our social media platform it's called ecoactube ecoactube.org is available to anybody to upload your own videos in any language irrespective of the quality and the format so also, if this is of interest, it is a free platform. It is different from YouTube, so it is not a YouTube channel, but it is um, specific in that it has a target audience, only people interested in sustainable ecological agriculture and the green economy. Looking at the soil health category, just to give you a an example, so you can see different organizations, different people um, have uploaded videos. It can be in any language. I think this is probably, um, I don't know, maybe from Ethiopia. Um, there's, there's videos in many different languages. So feel free to also explore that platform and make good use of it. And if need be, our, one of our colleagues would be happy to also give you a guided tour on this platform. So by this, I would like to thank you all, and I'm handing over to Blessings again. Thank you very much, Paul, for that clear and enlightening presentation.
Among other things, you have touched on the entrepreneurship model that Access Agriculture runs with its young people. At this point, I'd like to invite Ms. Jen Nalunga, who is our second speaker and is Access Agriculture's entrepreneur coach coordinator to explain how this model is working. Jane has been instrumental in building a team of coaches within Access Agriculture to support a growing network of young rural entrepreneurs across Africa and Asia who screen videos in remote areas where there is neither electricity nor the internet. Jen, over to you. Thank you very much, blessings. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to talk about entrepreneurs for rural access, our change makers. After the introduction, I'll talk about dissemination, then these challenges we face, then discuss something about the young entrepreneurs work and end up with a very brief summary. I'll start from where Paul hinted at the beginning. The Access Agriculture video platform hosts more than 230 training videos on agroecology and organic farming. Of these, at least 60%, 65% are on soil health. And we have about 95 local languages into which they are translated. Of course, this means we have a lot to share. And these videos can be downloaded free of charge from the Access Agriculture platform as long as you register. But what we have to pay particular attention to now is how we disseminate them, especially to rural areas. Remember in rural areas, we have various challenges. One is access to electricity. And even where there is electricity, maybe there's no access to the internet. And beyond that, the technical know-how of how to download these videos may also be challenging. So accessible culture works with the youth to alleviate these challenges. Accessible culture set up the Young Entrepreneur Challenge Fund to support young dynamic people who want to create a business involving disseminating agriculture videos to make agriculture more attractive to the youth and reach more women in rural communities. Some people think that agriculture is only about taking the hole, the hand hole, and you dip, but also agribusiness and bringing services closer to the farmer is also part of agriculture. So our young entrepreneurs are involved in this. After putting out the call, winners of the Young Entrepreneur Challenge Fund receive a solar powered smart projector kit containing access agriculture videos in local languages. And this enables them to have an impact in rural areas where they serve. The smart projectors come with a solar panel, so they can be used even where there's no access to electricity. And they have a hard disk that has the entire library of the access agriculture videos. So even where there's no access to internet, these young entrepreneurs can still screen videos to the farmers for learning purposes. And these young people, we call them entrepreneurs for rural access. These are either individuals or small teams of up to four people that use a smart projector to develop or expand their business. They can use the smart projector as a startup 
or they can add it to their already existing business. In the pictures, you can see in the top one, a gentleman standing, that is our entrepreneur for access in Egypt. And the lady in the bottom one, the one who has put her hands together and standing, she's an entrepreneur for access in brief era. And what is in the foreground is the smart projector on a stand, a tripod stand. Currently, we have more than 91 entrepreneurs for access, more than 91 eras. And these screen videos in different countries. You can see in the pictures where they're screening videos to the public for students and they're explaining. Sometimes farmers have questions and where they can the eras respond to these questions. The eras reside in 12 different countries, now 13 actually, in North Africa, West Africa, East Africa, Southern Africa, and in South Asia. As I said, these eras can be individuals or they can be small teams. They show videos mostly in various local languages that are common in their countries, but also in some international languages, including English, French, Arabic, and Swahili. I hope you can see the lady in the picture at the top. She's really engaging the viewers. When people discuss in their own language, they own the information they feel that is part of them. And in the picture below, the bottom one, you can see the lady is explaining. Everybody has her attention. And this can be attributed to the videos being in the local language. The farmers feel this is for them. Here we have a table showing the number of area teams and the languages in which the interpreters, the eras, normally show the videos. We have India, Egypt, Benin, Senegal. India in South Asia, Egypt in Northern Africa. Then you have Benin, Senegal, Mali, and Niger in West Africa. We have Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, and Rwanda in East Africa. And we have Malawi and Zambia in Southern Africa. When these era teams screen the videos, the farmers put this information they learn from the videos to use. There have been many, there have been many examples of learnings and practical application resulting from screening these videos. For example, some information shared after viewing the video on good microbes for plants and soil. This was screened by Lillian Sambo in Tanzania and watched by two farmer groups. They said, we have seen they use all the materials that are similar to what we have. So it's easy for us to make it and we are ready to produce practically. This means the farmers watch, learn and put to practical use. Another video screened by Nafisa in Egypt about stronger plants with raised beds. The farmers adopted the idea of planting on raised beds 
including the entrepreneur, by the way. Sorry about that. They mentioned that they indeed save water and money as they use less irrigation and diesel because they pump less and seed. And they said that the quality of the wheat they get is also better. Another video screened in Kenya, Vermiwash, an organic tonic for crops by Elfas Masanga. The farmer's comment was, the video is very educative, yet it is short. This is because accessible culture videos are not long but they're very educative. They thought maybe they needed three weeks course to learn about vermiwash, but they did it in minutes and appreciated this very much. So in summary, using the smart projector, Eras take access, access agriculture videos closer to the farmer. The farmers are able to learn in their local language from fellow farmers in other parts of the world. This has enabled many farmers to change their management practices for the better, contributing to better soil health. Thank you very much for listening to me. That is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much, Jane, for that wonderful presentation, and especially for expounding on Access Agriculture's innovative ERA model that involves young rural change makers. These are the two presentations that we had for you today, but would like to engage with you a little bit more. If you have any questions, please go ahead and type those on the chat and I will um, get to those so that we continue to engage. In the meantime, mm -hmm. I have one request in my inbox from Hitu who would like to share his experiences on the usage of EcoAgile. Hitu, are you there? Yes, sir. All right, please go ahead. I am Hitul Lusti, founder of Krishi Updates India. I have uploaded six videos on EcoActive and shared it among my network farmers. After watching these videos, the farmers showed great interest in taking up soil testing for maintaining healthy soil, learning methods for uh, rearing of honeybee and adoption of integrated pest management strategies. EcoActive empowers youth like me to network with like-minded people and provide us a platform to inspire, engage, and empower others in our communities. There are so many youth like me who are looking for a platform to showcase their strategies for farmer welfare. I would like to inform them that Assess Agriculture and EcoActive is a team of great people who are working to provide these solutions uh, to, the, uh, to the problems of farmers, uh, all agriculture professionals keen on serving the farmers community should join hands with Assess Agriculture. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hitu, for that contribution. Uh, Hitu was just sharing on his experiences in using eco -Archup. Uh, one of my colleagues has typed the website uh, and you can follow it from there. It's www.ecoactube.org. Um, I also have a question from Neva in Zimbabwe. Neva, over to you for your question. Neva, are you there? All right, maybe I should just read this question for him. He says, how does one become a member of Access Agriculture? Um, Paul or Jane, over to you guys for that question. A member, well, we are unlike uh, the four per thousand, we are not like a membership organization. So we are very much, um, well, as we said, it's a small nonprofit organization. And we encourage anybody to make use of our content. Uh, like Hitul was just explaining, I mean, any, anybody can make use of our platforms, of our videos, and we actually don't need to have former partnerships 
signed for that. Eh? So feel free um, to make to make use of of all the resources. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you very much for that uh, response, Paul. I hope that the question has been responded to. Isaac, you have a hand up. Uh, is that a question or a comment from you? Yes, I have a question uh, um, about uh, re regulation or policy on the content. Yeah, because we might, I'm a scientist and I might use the, it on teaching farmers, maybe uh, sharing knowledge, but there could be another person who use it for another purpose of getting money. So is there any regulation on the content that should be freely shared and not uh, uh, maybe being purchased, something like that? Mm -hmm. Okay, Isaac, maybe I'll, I'll just quickly respond to that. Um, obviously, when you operate an open access platform, there is uh, there's only so a limited number of control that you can do once the videos are downloaded. Now, we have examples of, of radio stations, um, of local, local vendors selling the videos. For us, it is, it is basically not a problem eh? because it is an effort. If somebody wants to promote and go on the road and sell this content and charge a little bit for us, I mean, we cannot control all that. The only, uh, let's say, limitation that we put is that people who download, they can never put the same videos from our platform on any online platform. And so trying to make money through online marketing of the videos, that, that is something that we have in our policy that is not allowed. Yeah. I hope that answers your question, Isaac. Sure, sure, it's okay. <laughs> All right, thank you very much for that question, Isaac. Any other questions from the um, uh, audience? I am combing through my chat and just also seeing if there's any hand up, just to ensure we're not missing um, anyone with a question or any contribution. Blessing, excuse me. There yes, is one, three, go ahead. There's one question in the chat that's from our ambassador Emmanuel from Nigeria. So he says that uh, I've been trying to start errors in Nigeria. Please, how can I do it? We may need funding to finance the inauguration of the errors in Nigeria. We need this very much. Okay, thanks. Thanks for that question. That's very important. Um, indeed, if, if funding allows, it would be possible for us to also kickstart the Entrepreneur for Rural Access program in Nigeria, because one of the preconditions is that we have sufficient videos also available in languages. And I know we have quite a number of videos in Hausa, Yoruba, and, and probably one or two other languages. So it would be possible pending the availability of, of funding. Um, I can also see Chris has asked about farmer field schools. What could be the challenge on farmer field schools? Well, maybe it's good to mention also that we are collaborating um, also with FAO to see how the farmer to farmer training videos could be embedded within farmer field school programs because the dropout of participants is a problem and because farmers are uh, often expected to take part on a weekly basis over an entire season and they sometimes get tired of training so there's there's one end to make the, tra the training formats more diverse within FFS but also to enrich it with experiences from other farmers. Eh? There is also a question from Lewis in Zimbabwe, and he says, where can one access the projector uh, that uses solar power? Okay, we can, we can provide the details. Some, I mean, one of the colleagues maybe can provide the details of the, of the company. It's a company based in the UK that sells these smart projectors. So we can, 
maybe provide the email address so you can get in touch directly with with the company thank you very much for that response uh Bafo King, you have a hand up is that a question or a comment from you what is your energy based on tension on about uh, agri uh, development or other related issues issues on agriculture okay, we try to cover anything that relates to agroecology so it is from let's say from soil health to crop management livestock soil uh, water management but also food processing and marketing. So if you go to the video platform, accessagriculture.org, you can see all the different uh, areas that we cover. Yeah, thank you. All right, I hope that uh, that responds um, to the question. Louis, if you check on the chat, thank you very much. Uh, one, of, one of our colleagues has put up a website for the organization that uh, manufactures the smart projectors. So you should be able to get that information on the chat. We'd also be happy to link you with them. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Um, any other comments or questions? Hands from Emmanuel. Emmanuel, over to you. Yeah, good afternoon, blessing. Good afternoon, Emmanuel. We can hear you loud and clear. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, I'm still on the era issue in Nigeria. I The, the funding, is it not possible that uh, uh, we, 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 I help to write to certain organization who could fund, possibly fund the era, uh, era, era program in Nigeria. So what I'm really asking for is a help for, from any coach who could possibly help us with the kind of proposal that we could direct to certain organization that could help us for you to be in Nigeria. We need this. That's, a, that's, that's exactly uh, what I need to make era to, to, to start in Nigeria. Because it's about... Be interested in this. I need someone to help me about that. Okay, Emmanuel, I'm sure. Um, I mean, Jane. Jane would be your direct contact person because she's uh, overseeing this this program. And I mean, your your offer um, to reach out to us and to try to identify uh, potential funders to kickstart this program in Nigeria is very much appreciated. Yeah, thank you so much. All right. Thank you. So Jane, Hello, feel free. Yeah. yeah. Put your email coordinates maybe in the, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, Samuel says we can take a look at other upcoming uh, 4 p 1000 fair events on a link that is shared on the chat. So if you want to see what other events are coming up, please look at the link that's shared um, in the chat. I am not seeing further comments and questions. So maybe we, we um, and I realize we're a few minutes over the time that we had set for this. Um, Paul and Jen, uh, maybe some final thoughts from you as we get to a close. Okay, well, I, I do appreciate very much that we have uh, been able to exchange with so many people and I, I really do hope, uh, like Emmanuel and others who have an interest to collaborate that this is, this is an opportunity for us to, to strengthen the sharing of good soil health practices across, across the, the globe. So thank you so much. Thank you very much, Paul. Jen, any final remarks from you? Yes, thank you, blessings. I would also like to thank everybody for committing time to attend our webinar. Thank you very much. And I would also like to urge 
or residents in the countries I mentioned in my presentation where we have errors, please use their services. It's a great opportunity for learning, especially sharing with farmers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much um, for that, Jane. And as we get to a close, we'd also like to extend um, our vote of gratitude to the 4 1000 team, and especially Mark, Samuel, and Claudia for organizing this event. But also would like to extend deep gratitude to all of you for making time to be here with us this afternoon. Remember that you can continue to engage with us um, via social media channels, for example, on our Facebook page, but also via our website, uh, some of our colleagues have also shared um, their email addresses that you can engage with us on. Uh, from all of us at Access Agriculture, it's been a pleasure having all of you here today. Thank you very much.